everybody and welcome back. Today we're here with David Manthe. He's the director of the Bear Chase Trail Races and also the owner and director of Runner's Edge of the Rockies. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So for some of our viewers who may not be familiar with Runner's Edge, what do you do there? So Runner's Edge is a marathon training program. And I say marathon, but we help runners of all experience, mm -hmm. all ability. Um, we've got uh, plenty of members who are training for their first 5K, 10K, mm -hmm. just getting into it. And then we also have more experienced runners who are you know, training for longer distance races, half marathon, full marathon, ultra marathon. We have a lot of triathletes in the group as well. Mm -hmm. But it's a group training program um, based here in the Denver metro area. Mm -hmm. And we have over 300 members. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do long runs on the weekends. We do midweek speed workouts. Mm -hmm. um, we just basically try to give everyone an organized uh, social group environment to train for their races and help them achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay, great. How can they find out more information about that? Do you have a website um, or in social media? Absolutely. Uh, our social media page is fantastic. You can just go onto Facebook and search for Runner's Edge of the Rockies. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go to runnersedgeoftherockies.com mm -hmm. and we've got lots of information about our training sessions. We actually just started mm -hmm. our 10 week uh, 2015 winter training session mm -hmm. and then um, as we approach the end of the year we'll get ready for our spring training session that runs all the way to the end of May. Very cool, okay, great. Well you obviously know about running and a lot about coaching and things like that given what you do with Runners Edge of the Rockies and now we're kind of in this transition from fall into winter Yes. where it's getting to be a lot colder, it's cooler even here this morning and it's cold especially in the mornings when a lot of people like to get their runs in. What tips would you have for winter running and just running in the cold in general? Sure. Uh, you're absolutely right. The, the, <clears throat> the transition period uh, as we get out of summer into autumn and then we move into winter, um, it's really important that people kind of give, them, give their bodies a chance to acclimate and adjust to it. Uh, by the time we get around to February, we're a little bit used to that cold weather. We've had some uh, several months of it. It's not as important, but I would say right in November, December, we're, we're not quite ready for that yet so it's a bit of a shock you walk out the door it's like oh my gosh it's really it's really kind of cold mm -hmm. um, it does take the body um, usually about 15 to 20 minutes to really settle into a, to a run and into a workout so it's important to prepare for that accordingly um, just the same as if you would start a car engine when it's really cold out you need to give your body ample time to get warmed up mm -hmm. so if you give yourself a little bit of extra time in the morning and that can even be as simple as I need to go and walk around for five minutes before I actually start my run. That's huge mm -hmm. because you're actually getting blood flow to the muscles, allowing the muscles to kind of warm up. Mm -hmm. um, it'll, it'll help make for a, a, a much better run, a more enjoyable run. Mm -hmm. And even just doing some easy stretching, um, doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to, to, to spend too much time doing a lot of static stretching, but just doing a lot of easy movements, um, you know, just kind of a dynamic warm up where you're just doing some gravity stretches, doing some leg swings, um, just kind of marching with some high knees, things like that. Even moving the upper body, it helps to get the blood flow going mm -hmm. and it helps helps the body to get ready for that run in the colder temperature. Mm -hmm. Are there any stretches in particular? You mentioned a couple or any specific sure. muscle groups or is it just kind of like all over you should really talk I, about? I always try to start I try to do the entire body as much as I can. I mean, especially if you're talking in the morning, you've spent the entire night asleep, hopefully asleep, mm -hmm. not tossing, turning too much. Um, but then, you know, you, you want to start from the, I always try to start from the neck down and I'll do things like neck rolls and just mm -hmm. kind of work out the necks. Mm -hmm. I'll do a lot of like shoulder shrugs, just mm -hmm. kind of open up the shoulders a little bit because mm -hmm. even though we're running on our feet, we're using our entire body to run. Mm -hmm. So, and then you can, and then after, as you continue to work down, you can do, you know, just a lot of torso rotations, things mm -hmm. like this. You mm -hmm. can do some arm swims. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing that I really like is just kind of even marching in place mm -hmm. or doing like a lot of high knees, these mm -hmm. kinds of things to mm -hmm. open up the hips, mm -hmm. um, kind of get the hip flexors going a little bit. You can even do some things like this where you do a little bit like open up the mm -hmm. open up the hips this way mm -hmm. and then obviously some easy leg swings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like that 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 in and of itself just gets the blood flowing and then you can do some easy gravity stretches where you bend down touch your toes you don't have to reach mm -hmm. just hang mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. things like that help and then if, if you're someone who's been a little bit more prone to injury or muscle tightness um, like in your quads your calves your hamstrings um, there's nothing wrong with taking an extra five to ten minutes to stretch those particular groups out as well. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of running friends who are anti-stretching and I know it's kind <laughs> of a weird kind of a thing and um, 
I'm, I'm kind of pro stretching, but I mean, in the first, but when I'm out in the cold, the last thing I want to do is sit there an extra five minutes and start doing these stretches. And all I want to do is sure. just get out there and start running. Yep. And you always kind of think, yep. oh, if I just start running kind of easy and ease into it. But then I think right. I kind of find myself picking up speed a little too quickly. Sure. And that yep. could lead you to inj- What kinds of injuries might runners come across if they don't prepare? Uh, I would say, I mean, for myself personally, I've, I've battled some lower leg injuries a lot throughout my running career. And usually it's tightness in the calves. Mm-hmm. I actually find that taking the time to, to realize, hey, I have to, I have to stretch. And even if it's a little bit cold outside, mm-hmm. um, if I step outside the door, well, one, I'll try to stretch indoors if mm-hmm. I can. I mean, take that 10 minutes, yeah. do it inside <laughs> before you even get outside is, is certainly going to help. But I do try to start from the, the, the top down. Our bodies are a kinetic chain. Mm-hmm. So starting from the hips, starting from the glutes, working the way down to the lower legs, it's really important to do that. Mm-hmm. So even though I have had those lower leg injury issues, mm-hmm. I'm gonna really try to also stretch my upper body as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. So, so that's important. And, and by all means, I mean, there are certain, certainly people who can step right outside the door. They don't need as much stretching. Mm-hmm. Um, myself, especially when it's cold, I'll take that extra 10 minutes. Right. It's just an insurance to my right. run. Right, okay. So is there ever a time when it's just, too cold out and runners just shouldn't be out like is, does it ever get to that level do you think and what do you think that level is oh boy um <laughs> i would you know it's actually funny um with with some of our runners edge of the rockies training runs we have had quite a few where the temps drop below zero mm-hmm. um the wind picks up mm-hmm. wind chills really bad and it's got to the point where if the wind chills really, really, I mean, usually what I say is if we start to drop into single digit temps and then the wind picks up and if it gets below zero, I'm probably going to cancel the run. Mm-hmm. I just, for safety reasons, I don't want people out there if they're totally uncomfortable. I'm more worried about frostbitten hands, frostbitten toes. We have had runners, no joke, will show up and even when it's canceled like that or if it's 20 below, and they've got Vaseline or Aquaphor smeared on their face and they're bundled up and they're ready to go. <laughs> so if you're well prepared and some people are wearing, um, you know, balaclavas and, you know, all sorts of, you know, face masks and everything else, if you're prepared for it, you can definitely handle it. I mean, you can go out. I mean, there's people who will go out and they'll get it out in, you know, 30 below temperatures. For me personally, that's where even though I don't like running on the treadmill normally, mm-hmm. I'll go find a treadmill or an indoor track. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Use the tool. Yeah, right, right. No, that makes a lot of sense. That all sounds good, except for I absolutely hate treadmills. Uh, <laughs> one of my friends once called it the dreadmill. The dreadmill, And that's, yes. that's how I see it. So what other exercises might you recommend that runners also do to keep that keep in shape right. and to kind of get that same um, aerobic kind of fitness, you know, level from sure. running, but do it indoors that's not running? Oh, yeah. I So I would say one of the great things about... Um, see more and more these days um, with better indoor facilities you see a lot of indoor tracks mm-hmm. and while that can get a lot that can get really monotonous as well you're running just laps and it, it may be one of those deals where it's 10 laps to a mile mm-hmm. I've seen, seen Trump some tracks where it's 14 16 laps to a mile um, you can mi- mix things up if you get to your rec center um, you, you get to your athletic club uh, early enough or it's a, it's a good enough time of day Lots of times what you can do is I like to call them the split workout where jump on the treadmill for, say, 20 minutes, then go hop off, go run around the track for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can go back and forth. Or if um, if you're okay, mix things up a little bit. Go ahead and get on the treadmill for a little bit, get on the indoor track for a little bit, and then get on the get on the, the um, a stationary bike mm-hmm. or even the elliptical trainer. You're probably not going to get as much cardio benefit. Mm-hmm on an elliptical trainer as you would running or on a stationary bike, Mm -hmm. but at least it does provide some great benefit. You can even do, you know, some circuit training, Mm -hmm. um, you know, hit training, high, high intensity, um, interval training is a really big popular thing right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so going and doing a lot of the circuit training where you're going, you know, to a machine, get off the machine, you know, but you're going quick, 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 quick. I mean, that can certainly provide some good cardio benefit as well. Mm -hmm. Does it provide running specific benefit? No, Mm -hmm. but, Definitely some good cross training in there as well. Okay, good. Yeah, that's all helpful. So, yeah, tell us again your your websites and everything so we can come find you. Sure. Uh, so it's runnersedgeoftherockies.com mm-hmm. and uh, or visit us on social media. And uh, anyone who's if you've never run with us before, come out for a complimentary mm-hmm. uh, first time first time run. Check mm-hmm. us out and uh, see what we're all about. Great.
Thank you so much for being here, for telling us a little bit more about Runner's Edge of the Rockies and those training tips, as well as the bear chase. For more training tips, go to runningdenver.com.